Okay, everybody, thank you so much for joining us today at RIT Podcast. This is Isaiah Diesel. I am here with a very special guest. Uh, would you mind introducing yourself? Yeah, I am Elder Corey. I'm a missionary for the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. My first name is James. James Corey is my actual name, but Elder is just a, a title that I have as a missionary. And you're 19 years old? I'm 19 years old, and I'm from Utah in America. Go figure. So, uh, you're a pre- member of the... Latter day Saints. Um, the, I know you don't like to the, the term Mormon, but uh, Latter day Saint the, LDS. Yeah, LDS is is part of the name. So it's the Church of Jesus Christ of the Latter of the Latter day Saints. Saints. Okay, mm-hmm. I thought a Church of Latter day Saints. Okay, okay, Church of Jesus Christ of Latter day Saints. Mm-hmm. Um, so can you mm-hmm. tell me how long you've been a member of your uh, particular organization? Yeah, so I have been a member ever since when I was baptized at the age of eight. Wow. So my parents. Have always been members as well. They were grew up in this faith, and then I also grew up in this faith, and I was baptized at the age of eight. Baptized, mm-hmm. interesting. I think I was baptized at the age of twelve, and then I got baptized again in college. But I think both times was actually kind of a peer pressure. So whenever I became a Christian at the age of thirty-two, my dad actually baptized me in our bathtub. Wow! So first time was in a pool. Second time mm-hmm. was actually in a baptistry. And the third time was in my bathtub, and that was the time that really mattered. So, uh, can you tell us real quick um, how you and I met, and uh, how long we've been talking for? Yeah, so I am serving in Korea right now. I mean, we live in Korea. But I met Isaiah. Well, I mean, as a missionary, we're always trying to find people to talk to about Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And so we had made a Facebook post, and Isaiah saw that there were other Weigukins, other foreigners, foreigners, in Korea. And so he commented on the post, and we came by, stopped by, and ever since then, we've just been meeting once a week for the past five yeah. months. It's been a while. And then, for the record, too, there's actually been some other uh, missionaries. Mm-hmm. I think there's, because at first, you were with uh, Elder Jackson. I think you need to call you guys youngers, instead of <laughs> elders, like youngsters, because you're 18 years old. That means I'm like a harapochi, which means like a grandfather in Korea, so... If you're an elder at 19, what does that make me? You know what I mean? I'm like ancient. But yeah. uh, anyway, so there were a couple other guys, and then we met a gentleman by the name of Binion. Mm-hmm. Or Bunyan, Bunyan, Binion, one of those two. And Another Binion. Binion, and then who was the, the tall dude? Who was the tall dude? I think that was other Binion. That's Binion, then who was the short dude? Oh, other Hudson. Okay, that's it. All right. So you guys have been rotating, trying to break mm. me down inch by inch uh, to these conversations, no, just, and but we've gotten to read. Yeah, we've gotten to read uh, quite a bit of um, the Book of Mormon, the book, the Book of Mormon, and the book, um, the the book. This is the first Nephi. Nephi. We went yeah. through that one, and then yep. we've got to have some conversations, some very long conversations sometimes. So that's nice, and. Um, but I do have to ask you this initially when I yeah. requested to do a podcast with you guys, you were a bit reluctant. So do you mind if I ask you about that? Yeah. No, at first, I mean, we had just barely gotten to this area only mm-hmm. like a week before we met. Oh, you. Okay. Um, just super, super recently. Mm-hmm. And then we didn't really know anything kind of about you mm-hmm. or about your podcast at all. Mm-hmm. Um, and we were kind of scared of what it might be. Right. I mean, there are so many people. Right. And that's part of the reason we're talking here. There are so many people that are so against I know, the I know. church. We're definitely so going to talk just, about yeah. that. Yeah, we're definitely going to talk about that. But, I mean, that was actually me. I think I told you this. I used to attend high school right across the street from, uh, like, a temple. So there were naturally a lot of Mormons there. And so I would try to debate these people, them and JWs. And first of all, I didn't even know Jesus Christ myself. But it was kind of like an in-out thing, you know, like you guys are separate from us and they're actually like the majority in that high school. So Mm -hmm. it's like, you know, it's really, I really regret the conversations I had back then. Um, because, uh, I did not know Jesus Christ back then one. And then two, just a matter of trying to prove myself and I'm right and you're wrong. You know, Yeah. the implicit is that if I'm right, you have to be wrong. So I don't really like to think like that. Like, um, I am a Christian, and, and I do like to present what I've experienced, but at the same time, I also want to give you the benefit of the doubt and, um, you know, give you not, hear you out and maybe challenge some things you believe in. Um, I like having my beliefs challenge this podcast, uh, you know, with challenging our thoughts, ideas, but also yeah. treating each other with respect. So 
think we've had some very respectful talks, right? We have. Um, and I think just another reason um, when we were first meeting that we were a little scared is, I mean, as missionaries, our job is to just talk about Christ and help others mm -hmm. come closer to Christ and learn about Him. Mm -hmm. And so spending our time just meeting with people who just want to kind of break us down mm -hmm. and are never going to even consider um, yeah. our message or consider anything we have to say, mm -hmm. we don't want to spend time doing that. I mean, that's right. a waste of time from other people who who haven't heard of Jesus Christ yet. So we were just weren't sure yeah, about sure. spending all that time. Yeah, but I said we've got to. In fact, we just had yeah. lunch right now. How was lunch? It was. It was so good. Okay, He's okay. a master chef. I don't know about that, but uh, just a fancy top ramen. But so, yeah, so so that's going to be one of the things I do want to talk to you about, and maybe some people's perception of the LDS Church, and you know maybe what you'd want people to know. But uh, let's start to let's start first and foremost. Like to you, what does the LDS Church mean to you? Um. I mean, the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. That's is... a mouthful, by the way. <laughs> it is. I prefer just Mormons. It's like it's a lot easier to. No, and it's actually the reason we even call it that. It's such a long name, is because that was the name that Jesus Christ gave to Joseph Smith, mm -hmm. one of the prophets that helped restore this church. Mm -hmm. um, before I get too ahead of myself, um, in answer to your question, is the biggest. I don't know what. The Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints means to me and to everyone really is that it is God's church again. Jesus Christ's same church that he organized when he was alive is restored. We're the Latter-day Saints. And so that's what it is. It is Jesus Christ's church. And he's restored the same ordinances, baptism, as well as all of the other things he talked about and preached of. And all the powers, the miracles he wrought. Those are Rot. He brought, brought, miracles. Right. He performed. He performed. Okay. We might have some ESL speakers here. So, <laughs> actually, that was kind of a beef that I was telling you with. Um, uh, I I use um, an IV version, and I think technically it's it's one of the more mm. inaccurate versions. But um, the reason why I use it is because because of the fact I am dealing with uh, people internationally and uh, mm. it's just the way I would speak. You know what I mean? Like mm. if you want to have a conversation, that's exactly how I would speak. So it's like when I read the King James or like the the King James or the the Book of Mormon, it's like I wouldn't use like who uses the ends the verbs with the th. You know what I mean? These yeah. days, it's like if you if you wrote something two hundred years ago, that's what you would expect those days. You know? Yeah. So it definitely feels almost like a different language. Sometimes. Yeah, I would kind of like. I don't know if anyone out there from the LDS church listening, you might want to update like a version, not changing, not changing what it is, keep it the same, mm -hmm. but as far as the actual, like, um, yeah. because especially if you're dealing with ESL people, it might, it might be like, wow, what the heck does this mean? Because some of the stuff is a little bit outdated, but mm -hmm. anyway. Uh, so ESL, what is ESL? English is a second language. Oh my goodness, yes. Yeah, English is a second language, mm -hmm. yeah. But you do deal with people, um, Korean people here? Yes, uh, absolutely. So is, is that a challenge? Uh, there is someone over here off camera who is, I guess, not exactly comfortable being in front of a camera. But what is? Um, do, do you are you mostly dealing with foreigners or um, we are. Korean people, or is it we a mix? Are. So it's. I mean, we're here to preach the gospel to whoever will listen. So it tends to be a lot of Korean peoples, Korean people, because we're in Korea, but they have missionaries just like me all over the world. And we've right. translated the Book of Mormon into as many languages as we possibly can. And we're right. working on others. I mean, I will say this. For as many things, as many gripes as I might have about the uh, the LDS church, they are organized like you would not <laughs> believe. Oh, my God. They take organization and, and, and you know, just order just to a different level. Mm -hmm. There's there's some things you just like, wow. This may be, and I'm not saying this this is right or wrong, but this may be 100% wrong, but man, you guys have a very efficient way to getting this out to people as, as far as this, yeah. you know, because you're on a, you're on a two-year mission, right? I am. I'm on a two-year mission, so I'm out here serving for two years. Right. So logistically to pull it off for so many different people in so many different countries and have the translations and how they move you guys around and stuff, mm -hmm. um, that's that's you got to give props where it's due, and that that's a. It, 
Oh. Some of the some of the some of the elements, I, I would say, it's, it's commendable. Um, in fact, I do want to say this. I do want to clear the air in this. Uh, I, I'm not a LDS member. I am a straight line Christian, but I have a very big problem with the way that a lot of Christians think and talk about uh, Mormons mm -hmm. or JWs. Because yeah. even if I disagree, like I have just finished a podcast with an atheist and. Um, you know, we talked for two hours and we, we clashed heads on a lot of points. I mean, a lot of points we clashed heads on, but um, we were very respectful. And the the word like cult gets thrown around when, when, when talking about Mormons. Mm, so yeah. what, like, how does that make you feel whenever you hear a word like, like a Christian referring to you? Like, yeah. what does that trigger inside of you? Um, honestly, it's just kind of sadness. Mm -hmm. It gets triggered inside of me. It makes me really just think that whoever whoever says that, whoever feels that way probably hasn't actually like met mm -hmm. a member and doesn't have like a relationship with somebody. Um, and I mean, I'm not saying everyone of my faith is perfect and I don't think you anyone can say yeah. that. <laughs> I, I'll be the Absolutely. Um, but I mean, we're just people trying to do our best. Yeah. Trying to yeah. be like Jesus like, Christ. Yeah, right, right, right. And, um, yeah, but, as it is, um, the word ignorant gets thrown around as like a pejorative, as like a, uh, like a, mm -hmm. to bash someone, but really everybody's ignorant about 99% of what is out there in the universe to know. So I'll be mm -hmm. the first to admit, there's things I not only don't know, but there's things I'm never going to be able to know, you know? And so even if you knew everything on this planet, that would only be what you've experienced right now. All the past, all the history. There's so much stuff in there that so much. we try to put together uh, as historians. Um, I studied history in college, but you should understand there's a lot of mysteries out there. And then there's, you're trying to fragment, put the pieces together. And sometimes it literally is like a puzzle inside of history. And you're doing mm -hmm. the best to try to figure it out. Then there's the fact that we live in a universe that's billions of light years across. And um, so there's a lot of stuff we just don't know, yeah. you know. So, but anyway, that being said, um, I would say people are ignorant maybe about um, the LDS church, but w what do you think is maybe one of the biggest misconceptions that people have? Mm. Um, I feel like the biggest misconception that I've come across is probably the most simple one, really, is that we are Christians. <laughs> I mean, Jesus Christ oh, yeah, is the misconception? center of our... Um, a lot oh, of people don't Christians. think that we're Christians. Okay, okay, okay. Um, I can't tell you how many times people are like surprised to find out that we're Christians. Mm -hmm. We believe in Christ. They just only know us as Mormons. And Mormons. That's, that's all they know. Um, but I mean, our church is Jesus Christ. Right. Church. And so, okay. So a couple of things I want to say that. Um, all right. So there, there's from Christians what we when, what we normally say is that when. And we, we use the word Mormon, but because that's what traditionally what we've heard. Mm -hmm. But we say when, when when someone mentions the word Jesus Christ, the way that you think about Jesus Christ is not the same way that I think about Jesus Christ. So that's one of the biggest. Yeah. Um, that's one of the biggest. Um, the biggest complaints so like you're worshiping an entirely different Jesus, mm -hmm. and so. And, and I'm just I'm just I'm just telling you th th this is what yeah. we grew up listening to and. What? I, Would you mind expounding more on that? Sure. Like just what kind of sure. So, differences? and and I do want to make something clear on this. If I talk to JW, um, and we've had the, we've had this conversation before, mm -hmm. but the JWs try to answer like Jesus and the Trinity um, in a very way in in a way that makes a lot of sense to to humans, like to try to rationalize. Well, if Jesus is like the Son of God, then clearly he was created created by God, you know, that totally makes sense. It makes total logical sense. So if you try to have the Trinity and you try to make sense of the Trinity inside of like human reasoning, like we simply can't. The Trinity makes no sense inside of our way to understand it. That doesn't mean it's not true, but uh, because maybe God is just on a different level than us and we're never going to be able to fully understand him until like maybe we see him. And th then we'll be like, oh, okay, wow, that's what you actually are, you know. So, so mm, yeah. with Mormons, and I've told you this, this is simultaneously like a, um, a compliment and a complaint because like, if I were to, de if I were to design a religion, um, I probably would be almost verbatim 
as a Mormonism. <laughs> because a lot of the problems that are very difficult, if not maybe impossible, to explain inside of Christianity, if you add in some other stuff with Mormonism, it'll make a lot more sense. And then even this, like, even to say, and I'm not sure how much you know about this, but... Mm -hmm inside of the realm of Mormonism, I guess there's like a potential to be a God. Mm -hmm. And so if I were a God and it's, and I were the only God out there, um, it might make some kind of sense to allow people to have their own creations and experience what it's like to be me. Cause I guess like as a father, now I have a daughter. You right. want your daughter, at, I, maybe my daughter 50 years from now, I want her to have a child. Um, that's a joke. But at some point, I'm going to be a grandfather. And you would, you, for me, like, I've, I've, I simultaneously, like, I look forward to the day and I regret it. Because as much as I love my mom, like, the love that I have for my mom would fit in, like, the, the pinky tip of my daughter. Mm. Like, I love my mom more than any, anyone else in the world. But, yeah. like, literally, and I, I would literally say that that's the love I'd have for my mom in relationship to my daughter. My daughter has a very small hand. But <laughs> the point is, is that I know that if my daughter were to have um, a child one day, she's going to feel the same way about that daughter towards me. So it's like, I'm like all of a sudden, I'm going to become like this little small, like almost asterisk point uh, in relationship mm -hmm. to me. But I'm like, man, why would I would want my daughter to feel just the love that it's like a, being overcome by a tsunami, you know? So I'm telling you, I can rationalize why maybe maybe I'm not I'm not going to say he did make this up, but I can understand why that would be something logical that Joseph Smith would want to make up. It mm. makes sense. Like I can I can rationally make sense of that, right? So maybe it is, maybe it's not the case, but it just seems very human human centered way of thinking that like because I'm telling you a lot of the problems I have with Christian theology if I adopted Mormonism, there are lots, it's a lot easier to answer these. Like, for example, the problem of pain and evil. Well, your theology, can you explain a little bit about, like, the plan of salvation? Because, uh, yeah. yeah, we'll get so, back to the Jesus question, but yeah. I just want to get some context. Mm -hmm. It's good. So our, I mean, the big plan of salvation, like you referred to, is uh -huh. kind of almost the reason we're here on earth and the reason we can feel pain. Like he was talking about the problem of pain. But we... It all starts, just like he was saying, almost with God having all of us as his creations. Mm -hmm. And then we come to earth. He wants the best for us. Just like Isaiah just said, mm -hmm. you said you want the best for your daughter. Mm -hmm. You want her to have so much love. Everything. Yeah. And so he sent us here to earth. Well, let me back up real quick. So when we were, we were with God before we came to this earth, he created us mm -hmm. and we were with him, but we were just spirits. We didn't have bodies, yeah, bodies, but God had a body and he was this perfect being and he wanted the best for us. He wanted us to become like him, but we were, we couldn't do that when we were in his presence. First of all, we didn't have a body, but second off God, I mean, he knows everything. He is omnipotent. Mm -hmm. And when we came to earth, we came to earth and we forgot all of that. And because we forgot all of that, we're now in this, in this, um, I don't know, time, I should say, that where we can learn good from evil for ourselves. When we right. were with God, there was no opposition. There was no good, right. bad, anything. Right. When God is all good. Yeah. So on this earth, we can experience the bad. We can experience the good. We can, right. we can learn good from bad. Right. So I normally have conversations like with atheists. Um, I normally have an atheist co-host. Mm -hmm. And... One of the things I do say, just because they do mention the problem of pain and suffering and all that, uh, as I, I will sometimes invoke uh, the Mormon theology, because I'm like, well, look, if Mormon theology is true, this question is actually irrelevant, honestly. Because if you just take a step back and think about this just for a second, objectively, mm -hmm. if you're in heaven, you're not, and God creates you perfectly, you're not going to understand, you're not going to even be able to appreciate what he's given you, unless you would know that, there's there's pain and suffering that you could you know or even just not knowing god just try needing to go out and search and find god because Absolutely. the bible describes god as like the sun in heaven is it 
it says like we don't even need a light. We don't need a, a sun in heaven because God's presence is like, it's like air. Like he's just everywhere, right? So if that's what you were born into, you totally would not appreciate having God, you know? No, Unless absolutely. you had time where you didn't know him or where you got to experience being, you know, being hungry, having to go to the bathroom, uh, yeah. having to spend a night where you couldn't go to sleep. So I suffered from insomnia for a while. Mm. Or me losing all my hair. Like, <laughs> maybe maybe when I get to heaven, I'm going to have some, like, really nice oh, hair. Some Fabio. So. Some That would be nice. Locks. Then I'll, Yeah, then I'll be able to appreciate this time where, you know, I got to shave my head every other day <laughs> to, um, you know. Or maybe, maybe maybe I'll be, like, a six feet tall or something like that. Seven feet tall. And uh, and I'll appreciate this time when I'm five foot six and, um, you know, <laughs> all these things that I, I can complain about myself. Mm. But uh, but anyway, it just makes sense. So, d getting back to what I said though, yeah. concerning Jesus, um, we would say, you say we, a lot of Christians would say that, from what we've heard, that like, God created uh, Jesus and Satan, and I guess they're brothers or something like that. But we would say that that is like a different Jesus Christ altogether than the Jesus that we mm -hmm. know. Because the Jesus that we know is a member, somehow I'm a member, like I, I can't really make sense of that if I'm being honest. So I don't want to hold you to standard. You have to answer yeah, everything yeah. because some stuff I can't make sense of myself. You know what I mean? Yeah. But, but that being said though, um, it seems like if I'm saying that God, that Jesus is a member of the Trinity, and, and the Bible talks about how he created everything. Mm -hmm. Well, if you're saying that he is kind of like a son to God and then the brother of Satan, then he's kind of like a created lesser being. So straight Christian theology would say like, no, he's exactly like same with, mm. with, with, with God. God the Father. You call yeah. Father God, right? Yeah. So... Um, yeah, that that's kind of that is like literally one of the most, one of the biggest most frequent complaints. And then two, I think the God element, becoming a God. I can tell you this as a Christian, I have no desire to become a God. I mean, I could understand that'd be great, of yeah, you have a planet and a universe and all that. But because um, I've learned a lot of humility inside of, I'm more humble than you. It's really what it is. Oh, no, I'm just kidding. Okay. Um, but that was a joke. Okay. So, uh, but, but but being humble, say like I'm fine to be down here as a creation. Um, yeah, would it not rock to be a god or like a like a Kim Jong Un who's created himself into like a god in North Korea? That would be awesome because especially people worshiping you, I think everyone has like that desire. Um, but it seems like that would be something that would be most Christians, more most straight Christians would find like mm. really like a blasphemous thought. Yeah, yeah, um, and. Kind of an answer to that. Yeah. I mean, I see what you mean. Mm -hmm. like, I know what you're talking about. And like us, oh, doing everything so that we can be like God and have all that power. And that's really not the motivation behind it's it. It's not the motivation. Okay. Because mm -hmm. God, I mean, God has promised that gift to us. That was the whole purpose of everything is so that we could become like him. But at the same time, we know God is not a greedy being mm -hmm. who has all this power and just using it, creating mm -hmm. worlds for fun type of a thing. Mm -hmm. He is, I mean, he talked about how he, I mean, him and Jesus Christ, they just have such, Jesus Christ is like God in personality and like what he would do. Mm -hmm. So we can look at Jesus Christ's life and also see Heavenly Father's same characteristics in him. So when Jesus Christ, I mean, he literally came to the earth and gave everything for us. Right. So we, I mean, God has promised us if we become like that and do our best to be willing to give everything for other people and just so selfless and so yeah. like Christ, then he'll give See, us that gift. And this is a, as a straight line, uh, Christian makes me stop for a second and be like, what room do I really have to try to bash you or call you a cult member <laughs> or whatever, whatever Christians say when... Uh, this is obviously not the case for every Mormon. I'm sure there's a lot of bad Mormons. I know that Jeff Jeffrey was that Jeff Jeffries dude. There's some pretty whacked out Mormons out there, <laughs> as there is with people with every. You know what I'm talking about, right? Jeff... I don't know, but I can. He is he's a pretty bad dude. <laughs> more, 
Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he is, I mean, he's in pri- he's in prison right yeah. now, but that's yeah, a pretty bad dude. But but just average, like you meet, like if you're not willing to do something like uh, smoke cigarettes or um, drink alcohol. You know, you take no no alcohol. That's what the Christians say. They these guys get worse. These guys are like you can't drink coffee. <laughs> so I would probably make the world's worst Mormon because I need like three or four cups a day. But the tea, like, that's kind of another one like, wow, really? No no tea? I could see the alcohol. Yeah. Maybe maybe even the coffee because it, it uh, it's kind of like a stimulant. And that's a big, I mean, that's a big thing that a lot of people look at. And they're like, whoa, that's crazy. Mm-hmm. And, I mean, it's not, I mean, how that came to be, why we even do that, mm-hmm. was actually because of Joseph Smith. Um, he prayed to God, he asked if there was some sort of health code almost that he wanted us to follow. He wanted the members of, of God's restored church to do. And then in in the 1800s, God gave him that health code. And so, I mean, the exact story is there were, I mean, right when the church was organized, they were having like a lot of meetings and mm-hmm. just stuff like that. And they were all chewing tobacco. And then Joseph Smith was like, I don't know if this is, I don't know if this is it. Like, yeah. if this is really what God wants us to do. And so he prayed about it, and then he received this revelation. Yeah. So one once again, if you're talking about alcohol chewing, that totally makes sense. I could totally get behind that. But um, Chris, some, some Christians say like that seems like an extreme. It's a, it seems like an extreme thing to do, and then it, it seems like a like a very work based religion. You know what I mean? Would you mind explaining? Yeah, yeah. Okay. On that a little bit? So, okay, okay. So, so one of the one thing about Christianity, which which I have to say, this, this is actually a kind of fault about Christianity, the theology, is that we believe that you just become a Christian and then boom, you're saved, you know? And the problem with that is, is that idealistically, that's a great thing, because then now we don't have to work for our faith and we just get it. But, but let's just say I said, hey, uh, I need some work done tomorrow. And uh, I'm gonna give you a hundred bucks right now. And uh, if you just come tomorrow and do it, um, you are either a couple of things. And this is the vast majority of people. Whenever you pay for so, pay for someone before they do a job, either they won't, they simply just won't do it, or they won't do the best job, as if they get the reward afterwards, right? So th- this is the good thing about Christianity. But then it's also you understand why a lot of people. Will, people will be like, oh, well, I could just go and do this X, Y, and Z, mm-hmm. and I'll just pray for forgiveness, or uh, I don't need to go out and reach people. Um, so I like I look at Mormons, and I'm like, okay, I think you guys' theology is off a little bit, but if you guys are out, like, 19 years old, like, this is, this is some of the best years in your life. You have their yeah. best energy. Then you're probably going to hit 25, and you hit, like, your plateau, and then physically start to come back down. I mean, my knee's starting to give out on me already. Ooh. I, I rolled it a few years ago, so I can't mm-hmm. walk and run around the way that I used to. Yeah. But, you know, you have your younger years. You have all the energy, all the life. You know, don't even need to sleep. I, when I was your age, I'd sleep three or four hours, and I'd be totally fine every day. Uh, especially when I was in my <laughs> 20s, out drinking, partying all night, and get up, go to work the next day. Uh, sometimes not even going to mm-hmm. sleep. So... These are these are times of your youth where you could be using it for yourself, and you're out actually trying to live up to your faith. I have a lot of respect for that. Uh, mm-hmm. It's a lot more than I see out of a lot of other Christians. So it's like if you're not even if you're not willing to have the same level of conviction to what you would call the truth, how are you going to criticize someone who maybe you say you're living a lie, but they're living it at least in a more consistent, uh, in a more consistent way? So it's like what room do you have to criticize there? You know, like, uh, for me, I find it very distasteful for mm-hmm. Christians to refer to LDS members as um, cult, uh, cult, um, or whatever like that. It just, it just seems really appropriate. Like, I, I feel like I can make more progress with you telling you about my experience with God and treating you with respect and a yeah. dignity uh, and treating you the same way I don't want to be treated myself. Absolutely. You know? I may I may have some wrong ideas about Christianity or God, but I don't want to be called like uh, I don't want to be made fun of, you know, or insulted yeah. or dehumanized from that. No, thank you so much for that respect. I know. Wow, this guy. Um, no, something you said, just like believing and then you're saved, like that mm-hmm. belief of Christianity. I would say that's not. That's not what we believe. 
as in just like you believe in Christ, you believe you can be saved through Christ, and then you're saved automatically. And grace, I mean, we talk about Jesus Christ, the grace of Christ. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of what that what that thought is. And to some extent, yes, we are saved by grace because Jesus Christ has suffered for everything. Yeah. There's nothing we can do that he hasn't suffered for. And yeah. there's nothing we can do to deserve that, that grace that he's already covered for us. But at the same time, God wants us to become like him. Everything Jesus Christ taught was, hey, believe in me, you can be saved. And he, I mean, in the Sermon on the Mount, he talked about all sorts of things you should do. If you really believe in Christ and believe everything he taught, yes, you will definitely be saved because you're, well, you will definitely be saved by him. But you will also do everything in your power to do anything that he says. Right, I like it. He is it. your savior. Um, and so, so this is what I've heard from, I've heard that, I'm not, do you know this, that the FBI like really strongly recruits among Mormons? <laughs> I have not heard that. Really? But yeah. I would believe it. You believe it because, <laughs> again, if you're not going to drink coffee, you're not going to drink tea. Chances are you're probably not also going to be like embezzling money, you know. Mm. Um, so if you're willing to be live faithfully up to something like that, um, I can understand why the the uh, the FBI might say that this is probably a, a group of people who we can trust, you know. So, but that being said. Um, even if we, even if I say I do not believe in the Book of Mormon or Joseph Smith was, mm -hmm. I'm gonna have to say one thing. One thing that really gives me pause about Joseph Smith is that guy believed in polygamy. So who would want to have more than one mother-in-law? Uh, once you have, <laughs> once you deal with one mother-in-law, you're like, uh, I think I'm good with. Yeah, okay, I'll, I'll pass on the additional sex or whatever because that's kind of like a trade-off. You know, and everything in life is a trade-off between being a single man or being a married man and Okay, yeah, you could have some more sex here, but you're going to weigh that out with being told to clean out the garage mm. three times on Saturday? <laughs> like, that's probably an overkill, you know, but I'm, I'm saying that a little bit of a joke, you know. But, yeah, yeah. Um, that's a total joke. I mean, I, I can, maybe a lot of guys would think, oh, that would be great having like multiple wives, but, but just with everything, it takes responsibility, you know. I like, like me, uh, maybe, maybe you're a much greater guy, maybe you're a much better guy than me. I have my hands full with one wife and one baby. So I mean, I saw this one where this Mormon dude was in, uh, he's like out in the middle of nowhere. He had like four wives, 30 kids. And they thought he was the best thing on the planet, man. His, his four <laughs> wives were totally content. They weren't like uh -huh. contentious. They weren't fighting amongst each other. They were always pregnant. One of them, it was, dude had like 30 something wives, uh, 30, 30, 30 something kids. Mm -hmm. So that guy must be a bigger man than me times 10 because I could not keep two women happy. I can barely, and I, and I do mean barely, keep one woman happy. You know what I mean? So, and I don't know, I don't know financial, I don't know how, some, how that makes sense because again, uh, kids, kids are expensive. So yeah. how are you able to do that with multiple people? Um, but, but that's um, actually something that's outlawed there right now. It's, yes. So we, we no longer believe in polygamy. I mean, it's illegal. But it is, I definitely don't know all of the things behind polygamy um, and why that was allowed or anything. But something I have found, I don't know, just thought about that's been interesting is, I mean, all throughout the Bible, there are instances of polygamy. Where yeah, God yeah, that's, said, that is like, true. That's, that's true. That's kosher. We that's discussed kosher. that today, actually. Oh, no way. That's yeah. Cool. But there, I don't know, there are just so many instances like that. And so it's interesting. Nowadays, it's illegal and looks super down upon. And, I mean, I think it's super weird, to be honest. Um, but, I don't know, just something to think about. The like God has, has done in the past. And then it was a thing with Joseph Smith. Joseph Smith even had questions about it. Mm. And there's actually revelations recorded in some of the scriptures that we have about that. that um, any chance you've seen... Because there's actually a few of these, which, which I think is so weird that people actually consent to this, but... Um, there's actually like I think on the Discovery Channel or the Learning Channel, they follow some Mormon like polygamists. One like of them's called like Sister 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 Wives or something like that. And I'm not sure if the guy is married to two sisters, but I definitely know some of them were like cousins. So it follows like the dynamics of their 
of that. And uh, there, there is a, there is at least two I know. And there's actually another one too that um, has to do with Amish people. And because like Amish people, which is something else I'm going to get to you next about you. So Amish people have to kind of go through a period where they're going to decide whether or not they're going to like go into the world or, uh, you know, whether or not they're going to stay part of their mm -hmm. community. Because you really have to make those decisions for yourself, you know. Yeah. And, and part of like what I want to talk to you next is is a bit about like how much of this is your choice? How much is it? Are, are you, mm. you going along with your parents or do you feel like a... Um, do you feel a, um, and I can't pressure. imagine, peer, I was going to say peer pressure, yeah, uh, because I can't imagine, um, I can't imagine there not being like like a performance anxiety. It's like mm. if you try to go to a restroom and someone's standing there and it's like, okay, pee, pee, pee. And they're like, man, if you'd probably go out and be able to pee just fine, the fact that you're standing behind me, like I can't pee now, you know? Mm. And so... Because you know what I mean, like like they're putting pressure on you. So, yeah. um, I feel bad either way. Like if you're a Muslim or if you're a JW or if whatever you are, if you're yeah. doing what you're doing for your parents, that seems okay. like because I did that and I said I went to Bible college, I was a minister, I was a missionary, and it wasn't until I found uh, Jesus Christ on my own that it wanted making a difference in my life. Yeah. So, um, can you tell me a little bit about yeah. that? Yeah. Um, before before I mention that, I did just want to respond about the polygamy thing i mean polygamy nowadays you just mentioned that like family nowadays but that is definitely not something we believe in now and so i don't i don't know all of the i don't know details along with that but that's definitely not kosher with our with our religion that's um, what that jeffrey's guys was doing and he's actually i guess he was also a pedophile but i mean this guy might be like an extreme You'll find that kind of stuff inside of Christianity. Mm. So I'm not I'm not saying you guys are bad because of that dude. No. Uh because I mean there bad bad bun yeah, bad everywhere. Bad bad apples exist in every group. Yes. So uh you could take like black people and go to the go to the people who are like gang members or uh you could go to the Islamic extremists and mm. say we're we're gonna judge them because of these people or the cops for the few people who do that, uh police brutality. Mm. And that's just not right. Like I feel like on average, you got to go by your average Joe Blow dude in Utah. Absolutely. Like, how is this guy living? Um, is he is he living more free? Is he living like more consistently inside of the religion? Obviously, as I mentioned with the FBI, like you know, c clearly, clearly they're doing some things right, you know. Mm. But yeah, That's anyway, let's move on past the polygamy. Okay. That was just kind of a little <laughs> joke I was saying. No, but for me, I mean, so I have. I have two older brothers, and the oldest one, he served a mission, but the my other older brother, he did not serve a mission. Um, really? Yes, he did not. He, so he didn't want to? He didn't want to. Sister Wives, by the way, that's in, the that's in name <laughs> of it. Uh, Sister Wives, just keeping reality. I'm just looking it up right now. Mm. Sister Wives. Oh, Big Love, that was the other one. That was the other one that I was thinking of. I couldn't. Oh, again, another one, My Five Wives. Sister wives is the one I was talking about. Um, maybe there are actually sisters in there, um, but yeah, there's there's multiple uh, big love, and it might be the one that's big love. Don't quote me right now, but um, it was like the guy is. They're like really liberal, like like really. So they're not like the conservative type of Mormons you might normally think about. Like they have like episode where they're like drinking wine or whatever together, mm. and so they're they're more they're more of a liberal persuasion. I'm sorry to bring that up. I just it was burning a <laughs> hole in the back of my mind. So yeah, such wives, big love, and I guess my five wives. But anyway, your brother. Your, so you said your brother didn't serve. Yeah, and he didn't he didn't serve. Um, and your parents didn't put pressure on him. No. Well, I mean, so growing up, there is kind of this inside the church. Um, the prophet, our, our leader of our church, he has asked all of the young men who are able to serve missions and then young women who are able, um, if they would like to, they can serve missions too. Mm -hmm. So, but it's not like, it's not required or no, not required at all. No, no. For, for the women, is there, cause I have seen some of them mm. actually on the field. So mm, yeah. is it not like there's not as much pressure on, 
on them? No. And it's kind of interesting. I don't know all the reasons why that is the way it is. Hey, but let's take a five. You're sweating a lot, so I, I want to get some more of this. All right, anyway, so we just had a little glitchy bar here, a yeah. little ice cream. Uh, I'll let you get back to what you're talking about, so that way I could, I'll eat this, and you tell me about your, what you're talking about with your brother and everything. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, I would, I definitely can't say there's not pressure to go on a mission, mm -hmm. um, especially growing up on the church. And I mean, I can't, can't really blame anybody's parents for, for wanting their children to go and serve a mission, just... I don't know. It's like a right of passage. Do everything they can to strengthen their faith that they believe in. Sure, I mean, sure, the parents sure. are like, hey, we believe that this is really God's short church, and we would love for, for you to put in the work and effort to know for yourself if it is. And then, I mean, we believe it is. So you should go on a mission and serve that with others, like the prophet has asked you to, that we believe in. But Let me ask you an honest opinion. Yeah, Do you yeah. think your parents are like 100% sold out, convinced that... Um, the LDS church is the correct way, or is it? Is there, has there also been peer pressure um, from them? Like, is it like, or do you, do you genuinely believe? Like, they believe that this mm. is the right way. I genuinely believe that my parents do believe that it's the right way, but at the same time, I also think that they did not. It wasn't always like that. If that mm. makes sense. Mm -hmm. I mean, they were also raised in the church, and you kind of, it's this weird like cultural almost. You're almost surviving off of other people's testimonies. You're like, well, everyone around me believes, so I guess I believe too, type of thing. But right, right. Kind of everybody just kind of hits that point where it's like, okay, well, is this really, is this really it? And usually that's the mission for a lot of people. Like, am I really willing to go spend two years of the so best of my life? Commitment. Okay, so I, yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah, like yeah. the best. There's a, there's a bit of an irony in that because like physically it may be your best, but you do some really stupid stuff when you're younger, <laughs> so. I wish I could take my mind and go and plant mm -hmm. it to my 20-year-old self. Like, it would do, it'd get accomplished quite a lot because great now it's like, yeah, I have matured so much, but now I need more sleep, and so much of my energy goes to my daughter. It's like, uh, I've, I've laughed about that because there were so many days I was out partying all night long, mm -hmm. no sleep. And now it's like your daughter forces you to get no sleep, <laughs> and then the next day you're not fully 100%. But anyway... Um, so, so along the same lines of that, um, so, so I yeah. get that, like, it's not like I didn't have that for my parents. My parents, like, strong army, yeah. like, to go to Bible college. I wasn't interested in going. Mm. And so I just, I do not say this as, like, a, as a way to, like, look down on you. It's like, I no. genuinely feel sorry if the reasons why you're doing this to go along, just because it's not going to be meaningful to you. No, no absolutely. Whenever you have the experience, um, whenever you have an experience where, you can talk about it with conviction, like I, I can, and this just has to do with where we happen to be in our life. I'm quite a bit yeah. older. Like I said, I could, I could literally be your dad. <laughs> so you're 19. Facts, 19. Like I'm literally twice as old as you. You know, <laughs> I've literally have scars and uh, wrinkles on my forehead. They're like same age as you. So literally. So, but that's just a rally to where we are right now. Mm -hmm. You know, um, if I were to have a talk with a 60 year old man, maybe his insights are going to be totally different than mine. You know, maybe someone in their 90s or whatever. So. Yeah. It's like wherever you are, I just want to meet meet you where you are. You know, yeah. I want to see exactly some of the stuff I've learned. Like, it's just not going to make sense to you. You know what I mean? Yeah. It won't make sense to you till you like lose your family members or you get a chance to go out and experience the world. Uh, me, I've got to travel around, and um, you know, maybe going to college one day. Hopefully, BYU or whatever, <laughs> wherever you go. Uh, but you know, you go through that, and there's just lots of different life experiences. And so, again, this is not to insult. It's like. I don't really see what you would tell me at your age that's going to make, like, an ounce of difference uh, in my life because I, I look at you and, like, you know the expression, like, what, behind the ears? Uh, like, you just mm -hmm. came out of your mother's womb. Mm. Um, I would, if you were living at home, I would call you a zygote, which means you're, like, you're not even, like, a baby. You're like, you're, like, a developing. Like, but that, that's the way that I look at any 19-year-old. Mm. Any, any, it's just, it's not, not, has nothing to do with you. You know what I mean? So that's, I can't have certain conversations, yeah. so it's like... And that's probably... I mean, that's one of the hardest things about being a missionary. I mean, I believe... I believe in my religion. Mm -hmm. um, and so does millions of other people. But lots of people view me like that. And so it's hard... It's hard for them to really take what I say seriously. 
which is hard for me because I feel like I really do believe. Um, and I've had experiences. Um, I mean, probably the biggest reasons I believe what I do is one of the awesome things about my religion, mm -hmm. about the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, is the prophets, like I've been talking about. Just like Moses or Noah or Peter, James, and John after Jesus Christ. Yeah, modern-day prophets. Modern-day prophets. And so you can almost put it to the test, see if they really are prophets of God by listening to them. And they have, I mean, you can just look it up. I'm sure you trust Larry Saints, like who the prophets are. And just this last weekend, they had a big general session kind of conference thing where the prophets spoke to everybody in the church and everybody in the world. Um, and you can listen to that and see and just like ask in prayer, like, hey, are these really, are these really people sent from God? Are these really prophets of God? Is God really speaking through them? And I have prayed and listened to their words and I definitely believe that they are prophets of God. But not only that, it's also the Book of Mormon that you mentioned before. That's another awesome thing about our churches. We have a set of scripture that no other church does that we believe came from God. I mean, it's other prophets who wrote things down. Um, and, I mean, we're trying to spread that with the whole world. But it's nice because you can read that and you can pray about it. You can say, is this really God's words? Because if it is, and that means that there's there's some oof behind what I believe, what yeah. we believe in religion. And that's something I think that's interesting that I'm trying to think, I don't really hear that in any other religion where they're like, you can have this confirmation, this um, the kind of like a burning or whatever mm. in you, or um, that there might be some kind of psychological, like, um, explanation for that i'm not really sure because i don't know what you experience one way or the other so yeah. um it could be some kind of like a like a group group think psycho psychological experience that because sometimes that kind of stuff can get transferred uh, to people like hysteria or, or whatever you know yeah i'm not and i'm not i'm not dismissing that but no. but 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 one of the things i think that's just unique that i i really don't hear any other any other church saying making those kind of claims that like and this is why, actually, just last week I joined dinner in your Zoom, when you guys are Zooms. I have gone to some of the Mormon churches with some other missionaries I met, mm, you know? Yeah. Some other missionaries I met out just walking along. You know, I invited them in. Like, I made them sushi and, you know, food and stuff. And uh, definitely just sat down and treated them like equals. And so, um, because even if I disagree with 100% you or JW, it's like, that gives me no right in the universe to, to show disrespect towards you. And... Um, Furthermore, it's like, if I were to want you to adopt my kind of uh, way of thinking, mm -hmm. Christianity, it's like, how am I going to do that if I'm, like, assaulting you or belittling you or uh, slamming the door on your face, something like that? That's not really an appropriate thing to be doing, you know? And I mm -hmm. think this with this podcast, we're talking to people. I mean, we had one talk with a Jew and a Muslim guy come on, you know? Yeah. It's, it's called, like... The name of it was a Jew, a Muslim, and a, and a Christian walk into a bar. And uh, that was the name of the podcast. But, you know, we just sat down and had an interfaith conversation. And yeah. the, you know, people are saying in the comment section, like, this is the most uh, respectful interfaith uh, conversation that they've ever seen online. And, you know, I have atheist co-hosts. And probably my biggest claim to fame is in this podcast is like five of them have trusted me to uh, send them out some packages with their address. And you ever heard of doxing? Doxing oh, people? Mm -hmm. Doxing is like whenever you release people's personal information oh. or re release their names or addresses, yeah. stuff like that. So yeah. this kind of stuff happens and from Christians to atheists because they get in these, these, um, you know, disagreements about theology mm -hmm. and they feel like that's a license to, to show disrespect uh, to attack people, um, and so for me, um, I mean, we just talked about two hours before you got here, and we didn't agree, like, on almost anything, probably, we disagreed probably, like, 75% of the time, <laughs> but still, I mean, we gave each other a bump afterwards, you know what I mean, yeah. we're extremely dis uh, respectful, and I think that's the, that's an important thing, you know, especially, yeah. I don't see Mormons showing the level of hatred that I see from a lot of Christians, so, I mean, I gotta give you guys props for that, even if you are out there spreading with your version of the truth, you aren't attacking like Christians the way that Christians attack. Um, I'm sorry, LDS people, right? Mm. Would you agree with that? Um, I would. I mean, I'm not super familiar about all the like specific instances 
of things happening all the time, but I would definitely, I mean, yes, we believe that we have the truth, mm -hmm. but I mean, literally like the foundation of everything that we believe is like God is our loving heavenly father. We're mm -hmm. all his children. In our church, we call each other brother and sister. So you would be brother Perez. Um, as long as you believe. don't use elder. <laughs> I'd go with any other title except for elder, man. <laughs> I already lost all my hair, man. I don't, I don't need any more reminders <laughs> that I'm old. No, but it's just, yeah. I'll get the title like Youngster. Just put Youngster on my, yeah, if I go there. <laughs> yeah, so uh, you got any last thoughts, man? Um, I don't know. Maybe, maybe we get really like a two-minute sal two sales pitch for a moment. Two minutes. <laughs> <laughs> um, I would just say for any of you guys who are, are looking for any more spiritual, I don't know, spiritual truth or truth in general, I would say come and come and try and find the truth for yourself. Um, I believe that we have the truth that this really is Jesus Christ's restored church, and He runs this church through His prophets. And you can know for yourself by listening to prophets' words or reading the Book of Mormon, and asking God, coming to God, saying, "Hey, is this really, is this really your church? Do you really have a church even on the earth today?" And He will answer you if you really want to know. If you're really going to act on the answer that he gives you, he will give it to you. That's it? That's it. Okay. Come and well, know. Um, and I've told you this. I, I was an atheist myself, yeah. and I had a religious conversion. And actually, Jesus actually spoke to me in my room yeah. uh, seven years ago. I've got the date tattooed right here, uh, 516. So I just celebrated seven years, um, you know, five months ago. And... Um, I don't, maybe some Christians might be a little bit more uncomfortable the fact that I'm not going to sit here and um, try to debate you or uh, mm. dehumanize you in any way. Um, but I know when Jesus spoke to me, he didn't say anything about like whatever you guys believe in. So I can go off of what I've experienced, you know, now if God reveals something out later on, I got to be, I got to be open to the fact that God can reveal more stuff to me. But for now, mm. it's like he's revealed straight line item Christianity to me. So if Christians are going to say you or JWs or whatever denominations or Catholics, I, 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 I don't, that's not something I'm, I'm not trying to disclude, dis, dis, disclude, um, dissuade, not dis, what's the opposite of include? Exclude. Well, discount, exclude. exclude. <laughs> yeah, living in Asia, I've lived here 10 years, man. You don't want to live here. <laughs> Your vocabulary will go down, but, uh, exclude. Okay. Exclude. I was going to say dissuade or um, I don't want to say you're you're going to go to hell. How, how the heck do I know that? I'll leave that decision up to God himself. Like You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I'm not going to sit here and say, uh, like, if you're telling me you believe in Jesus Christ and you've accepted to him and you live according to the Bible, maybe there might be some little, maybe you have to call it a little weird. I know your underwear thing, whatever you guys wear. <laughs> maybe that's a little bit weird, but... Um, I'll leave that choice up to, you know what I mean, that decision up to God. I'm not going to play God. I feel like if I'm telling you, you're just totally going to go to hell, and you've accepted Jesus Christ, and then I talk about telling you I didn't want to play God. That sounds like I'm playing God at that point, yeah. you know, and that's not something I want to do. Um, so just wherever you are right now in your journey, I want to be here as a friend, and uh, yeah. definitely appreciate the time you've taken to come here. Thank you. Uh, Thank I know you, you had to go back for some time, so uh, you've been back. So How I've been long back now? About a month? Just about a month. Yep. Just about a month. I had to go have surgery. Yep. I had a surgery. But I just want to, I mean, I would also, I've talked a lot about how, I mean, I believe that our religion is run by Jesus Christ. But I also just wanted to say, just kind of echoing Isaiah's words, that Jesus is the Christ. And that's Amen. really the, the focus of, of everything. So, I mean, our, our job is to invite us to come into Christ. And I believe you can find so much peace and happiness through through our religion. But... Christ is really the focus. So yeah. I'm, I always love to meet amazing Christians like Isaiah and probably just like all of you. Um, but thank you for this time, yeah. Isaiah. Yeah, and um, you know, be sure to visit our website at www.regpodcast.com. Check us out on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, uh, Spotify, just about everywhere you can find us. A uh, podcast you can find us. And mm -hmm. you can send us an email at regpodcast at gmail.com if you want to come on as a guest. We're not looking for like big names or people who know a lot. Maybe just to have a conversation about uh, lots of topics. We've talked about a lot of stuff. We've talked about yeah. you know music, writing, 
um, inspiration, um, marriage, diction, all kinds of stuff. So, uh, yeah, we, we really look forward to seeing you back again. And thanks for joining us today. Goodbye. Absolutely. Thank you.